Hello everybody, welcome to the Tube, a lot going on, here's our lineup. Facebook's plan to be the biggest publisher ever. Google Glass is still alive and it has some dance moves. The first wearable that will kill the pain. The new AOL TV show is in Israeli format. And the internet sensation Kutiman with a love song to Tel Aviv. Let's go! Facebook is now such a big monster looming over the internet, it seems like someday it will be the internet. The New York Times reported that the social network will begin a test run of hosting content from news organizations, including the New York Times, BuzzFeed and National Geographic, within its site. This would be a change from the current system articles are spread across Facebook via links to the news organization's own website. Speaking at the the conference in February, Facebook Chief Product Officer Chris Cox moved to assure fears from a Facebook takeover, saying we don't want to try and devour and suck in the internet. Yeah, we're not sure about that one. And now for some big money. Russian billionaire and Chelsea FC owner Roman Abramovich continues to invest in Israeli startups. Through Milestone, Milehouse Capital, his investment company, he has led a $2.25 million investment in iAngels. That's a small company that wants to transform startup investments process. iAngels platforms enables anyone to invest relatively small amounts as part of a larger buying group, thereby obtaining better joint value for his investment. The company itself selects worthwhile startups for investment, subject to recommendation from leading investors, what the company calls angels. Well, a startup that sees itself as, well, help sent from above might be a little pretentious, but check out their pitch. The world of startups is full of interesting ventures and endless opportunities for making great investments. It seems like every day there's a new story about the next billion dollar company that you just missed. So why aren't more investors just like you joining this world? Well, for one thing, it's hard to get access to the really great opportunities. Moreover, it's even harder to identify them once they appear. And then, of course, there's the question of spending a huge amount of money on one single investment. If only you had a guardian angel to look after your investments. Good news, sport. Now there is. iAngels is a unique and revolutionary startup investing platform that lets you invest right alongside professional investors, also known as angels. These angels have proven track records and tons of experience in identifying great companies and helping them grow. Yeah, good news, sports. Yeah, okay. Uh, Google Glass has gone back to the factory, but Google insists its concept is not dead yet. And while reconsidering their steps, Google are partnering some new glass developments. Google was awarded a patent for a system that could determine what music is playing and display appropriate dance moves to go along with it on a heads-up display like Google Glass. The patent also outlines methods for a wearable to see other dancing figure out the moves and show them to the user so they can follow along. The patent suggests that the system would search the web for dance moves that, well, might fit the beat, but also suggests it could have access to a database of dance moves to call upon. That's groovy, Google. And now let's take a world tour with our worldwide weekly startup report. <laughs> With us in the studio, Shai Ringel, good evening. Good evening. Okay, let's start in Canada. Let's. Uh, a company called Lumo uh, wants to uh, invent the new interactive uh, projector. Let's see their video. Remember when your floor was made of lava? When playing meant moving around, exploring, dreaming. Introducing the world's first interactive projector for kids. Lumo transforms your child's room into a magical interactive world using safe, energy-efficient technology. 
Wow. Yeah, the idea is kind of simple because um, the projector can not only project image but also uh, understand where the user is standing and change it uh, with a computer inside the projector itself. Um, the idea is not new. The idea of building it for kids is kind of new and kind of smart because kids understand the whole interactive touching uh, media much more than adults. So coming straight to kids and pushing their imagination uh, uh, extra hours for the projector is a great idea and good for Canada. Yeah, um, and so meaning that this product is already available and can be bought in any, to any this person's is all, house? This is now a pre-order, um, mm -hmm. um, so it's it will be there in a couple of months. But yeah, it's a real product. Uh, they say it works. We're ready to see uh, it for ourselves. But the interactive projector itself is something that a lot of uh, companies are trying to build these days. Uh, it looks good. Uh, the question for adults will be uh, the respond time. How much time does it take mm. from when I put Ta my hand on it to... to oh, well, wait hold. and see. It looks like it's a super cool video, at least. Yeah. It looks fun. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on to China. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese are trying to build robots and what's good about the Chinese robots are that they are really simple and really cheap and a new Kickstarter project uh, tried to uh, sell a drawing robot. Let's see. Form 1 is M Spider. It's a high precision robot on a vertical surface and typically its painting range is huge. The two-step motors are used to control the position of the spider. Form 2 is M Scara. Oh, you have seen that before? Mscara could draw wonderful painting on the paper, and if you put a laser diode instead of a pen, it could even become a laser engraver. The third one is M Eggbot, which could help you make your own Easter egg. Pretty, uh huh. And the last one is M Car, the infinite drawbot on the ground. What? Yeah, what you're seeing is actually the same robot being used for all those different kinds of drawing. A drawing robot? Yeah. Why would one need a drawing robot? That's a good question. Uh, if you need something to be precise. Uh, and the idea of trying new things on robots. The uh, robot itself is not... Uh, this Chinese robot is not something that every man will like to buy and try because it needs an uh, assembly and reassembly of the, the robot. But, you know, if you want to draw on an egg, yeah. And you, and you, you put on the computer what you want it to draw yeah, and then exactly. it draws it precisely? Yeah. And if you, I put the Mona Lisa? You can draw the Mona Lisa and say it's yours. It, it, it's kind of, you can ask why won't I print, but on different surfaces and, uh, you know, like eggs, the egg is a good example of trying to draw from a printer on a very a difficult uh, surface. There's also one mode of the robot that can draw on, uh, just drive and draw on the floor, which is kind of cool. And, you know, nobody will buy it, but it's a cool concept. But we talked about it, which is nice. Let's move on. Yeah, let's go to the big uh, subject, from my opinion, in our uh, weekly report. Quail. Quail is an American startup mm -hmm. that uh, has built a wearable device that can ease pain. It, instead of taking drugs, you'll just wear it. We have a video. Chronic pain affects sleep, which limits activity, which worsens pain. It's a vicious cycle, but now you can break the cycle. Experience relief. Stay active. Sleep better with Quell. Here's how it works. Quell stimulates the sensory nerves in your upper calf. Those nerves carry neural pulses to your brain. These pulses trigger a natural pain relief response in your central nervous system that blocks pain signals throughout your body. Quell is designed to live with you, bringing all day and all night relief. And it's easy to use. Snap the electrode in place, strap the band to your upper calf, 
and simply push the button to start relief. That's it. Yeah, but how does it relieve the pain? Yeah, it's, it's, it's science. But uh, the idea is that it stimulates the nerve system so your brain will understand that it's no longer in pain. It's a difficult process, but uh, it's one that has been, um, been around for decades. And now with the new technology, uh, Quail, the company, uh, mm -hmm. hopes that it, will, it can bring it to the masses, uh, which means that you, you don't need any drugs. It's over the counter, which means you don't need a doctor prescription for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and instead of taking like a pill for a headache, you can yeah. just use this instead. Yeah. And we're imagining and a world where yeah. people actually do that. Just yeah. put their thing. Exactly. It's oh. not on your head, it's on your uh, thigh. Okay. And it's supposed to stimulate the nerve system there and go straight to your brain. So nobody will see that you have it. And it's not only for headaches. You know, you think only if, if I have a headache and I take a, a pill. There are people who has chronic pain 24 hours a day and this can really change their lives uh, if it really works it's a uh, federal uh, the federal administration for health in the united states already approved it mm -hmm. which means that they believe it works and there's no side effects uh, no, no big side effects. There are wow. sounds amazing. Yeah, amazing. Let's move on. Yeah, we'll close uh, the day with glasses. Okay. A small English uh, company that wants to revolutionize the way we buy glass glasses. Let's take a look. The glasses say a lot about you and your sense of style. We want to give you the choice to create your own frame. We have developed a range of designs, materials, colours and finishes for our products, which total over 250 combinations. You create it, we make it and you wear it. Bantam Frameworks began as a university project to design eyewear. Having worn glasses from a young age, I always felt the frames on offer didn't reflect me, so we set out to create something more individual. To graduate in 2000. Uh, yeah, it's glasses. Yeah, the idea is uh, technology can t democratize a lot of uh, fields that you didn't think can be democratized, which means that glasses today can cost a lot of money, especially if you want them to look pretty. And here you can uh, choose between 250 different combinations of glasses and make them your own. And this is something that a lot of startups are going to do. It's a small startup that own, uh, actually can also manufacture the glasses. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll wait to see if they really Good news work. for glasses people. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shai. Thank you. Let's move on. <laughs> Now AOL is entering the world of streaming original TV shows with a little show they hope it will be a hit. Connected is a reality show with a slight twist where the characters are the camera operators capturing their daily lives and challenges. Based on a popular Israeli show, Mechubarim, that's the name of the format in Israel, has been licensed to programmers around the world with AOL securing the US rights. Award-winning filmmaker Morgan Spurlock serves as executive producer of the American version. Unlike Netflix and other streaming networks, AOL does not subscribe to the binge-watching concept and it plans to release four of the 20 episodes every two weeks. Here's a minute from the show starring Jonathan Berklin and his romantic partner, one Susan Sarandon. I'm sitting on a rock next to the lake in Maine where Susan lives and her father lived before her. It's heaven to get away from New York City and unplug. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going on the lake. Wait, I want to smoke a joint. I think it goes well with canoeing. I'm a big fan of these rolling papers, Randy's, because they have the little wire. It feels like one of the most brilliant inventions ever right after the canoe. Fire, fire is important also. I think it's important to get in the canoe. Almost done, so impatient. You don't have to smoke the entire thing, you could but save some. But we're rushing some. to what? Go get in the canoe and do nothing. No, I was just getting a little bored with you. 
Yeah, it's a good show. And that's it. Show's over. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show of The Tube. If you miss us, log on to our Twitter and our Tumblr. It's The Tube 24. And before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with uh, Kutiman, the Israeli musician who got his worldwide fame from ending editing amateur YouTube musicians to beautiful songs. So now he's back, but this time he's celebrating our very own city, Tel Aviv. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.